Okay, so, right, hello. Um, I had the Phantom Vision, and the quality of the gimbal, as you know, isn't actually much good. It's um, very fixed person view, so if you if it tilts, it tilts, the, the horizon shifts back and forth. So I decided I was gonna buy a 2D gimbal. So the one I invested in was this one from I saw it on eBay. And I don't know the size you can see. Put that, uh, on, on. It's this one here. Now it actually turned out to be quite a good gimbal. You do need some tuning on it. And I put a post on to a Facebook page and people say, oh, how does it install, etc. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how this actually installs. I'm to turn the power off to the quad for a moment. Okay, now let's just take it down here. Turn the bird upside down. So first of all, for power and camera feed, you can see what they've done. That is the power lead from the board. And this is your existing lead. And what they've done is you can see they tapped the 12 volt feed off the camera power supply. So no opening it up, no soldering. And the lead for the camera is flexible enough so the gimbal can tilt all the way up and down without catching. Same for the IMU cable which is just here. For the pitch, again, you see the point there, that is the original feed from the NASA unit for the original servo. And the manufacturer simply made up a plug that fits, and that's the pitch control. So to actually mount this gimbal, all you need to do is remove the other one. So there's, obviously take off the foreground, it's under the pitch cable. Unscrew the old style white plastic gimbal frame. This one screws on, same four screws, underneath there. Put your rubber bungs in, catch up your power, plug in your camera, get the pitch control, and that's it. Um, there are some changes you need to make to the software uh, for the gimbal. So I'm just gonna just plug the camera back in a second. Get me lead. Now, power on the button. As you can see, the camera does sit quite level. Unfortunately, with this gimbal, there's a small issue, and that is if you turn that way too far, the arm catches. So if you you're too hard to the right. Left's all right, but for some reason, it does that. Now, not much of an issue. I've spoken with a couple of people, and what they've done is they've actually trimmed this air down, which is all right. So now, in the software, now the change you need to change, first of all, take your gains here to zero, because that's the automatic control gain from the NASA, because now it's on a 2D system, they're not used. And I've changed the maximum pitch, minimum pitch, and the center pitch to 450. Now then, there's also now some changes you need to make, or at least changes I found you need to make. Oh, to show you the circuit board is actually hiding in there. You've probably seen the ones on eBay from China um, where the board is stuck to the back here. Uh, I've actually had one of those, the board failed within an hour. Um, and you also have to extend the legs because this arm is longer. So the gimbal sits lower and you have to sort of raise your quad up by about five, ten mil, something like that. Stop it from banging actually on the table. So let's plug in the, the gimbal to the software. Just power off that, I don't need the power onto it. Let's unplug that. The plug for it, I've got a little bit of tape to insulate the board because I was making some changes. I'll show you why in a moment. Board plugs in there, and you'll hear it start to make a beeping noise. On this quad, this board's quad, I should say, the 
software, simple BCG, is let it load up. I'm connected on COM12, yours might be slightly different. And you can see the firmware version is 2.2b2. Now, most important settings were the PIDs, which everyone talks about. I kept mine pretty much at standard 18, 12, 14, 20. What I did do is increase the I value slightly. I've chosen to skip calibration and power for the motors, I think I left them at standard 115 and 82. Now in advanced, oh no sorry, RC settings, I found that the camera would tilt up with me, uh, a little bit too far. So I've changed the pitch there to 30, left that at minus 90. Otherwise I found the camera would just tilt all the way up, which obviously wasn't any good. That's really the only changes I need to have made. Um, the gimbal works, uh, the quality is quite good. I've put a, a video that I've done, I've done a couple of videos on the uh, on how well it works. Um, if you're going to buy one for 60 quid, it's what, how much is the RPG going for? Is it 395 quid or something plus import charges or whatever? And you're looking 400 quid for a gimbal from RPG, same from the drone expert. They don't actually make one anymore uh, for uh, the Vision, they're now producing parts solely for. Um, the uh, the Phantom at uh, the Inspire, I should say, the Inspire one. Good luck with that. Um, that's it. Um, buy one, fit it, and uh, oh, that was the other thing I meant to mention. I did put uh, some cable ties because I found that the board, when it was flying, the board would move back and forth, not side to side, back and forth in that direction. Just oscillate slightly, and the picture quality was affected. I put a couple of cable ties, not too tight, just tight enough to cut out the movement of the board, just to help stiffen it up a bit. Uh, that's it. That's all you need to have to know. Um, go buy one if you want to buy one, and 